On October 1st of 2022, I completed an Ironman 70.3, and just four months prior, I didn't own a bike, I had never swam, and I had done really minimal running, and I went from that to completing an Ironman 70.3, and in this video, I'm going to tell you how I did it, and uh, the things that I would probably do different if I were to do it again. I know this isn't the normal kind of video that I would put out on Rhino Joe Outdoors, but for me, this has been a huge transformational moment, not only physically, but also mentally. And so I just kind of want to share this with you guys. And if the YouTube algorithm has brought you from some other part of YouTube, welcome to my channel. But I just want to focus on this journey today and how I went from not really doing anything triathlon based to like finishing an Ironman 70.3 because it was one of the most challenging things I've ever done to this date. And this has really opened my eyes to how much we can actually accomplish when we put our minds to it. And a lot of those limits in your mind are just self-imposed and you just have to work through them with hard work and dedication. So at the beginning of 2022, I was kind of lost. I had a lot of transitions at the end of 2021 that brought me to a point to where I knew I needed to make some changes. I wasn't happy. I was just kind of making it through life. I was just surviving and not really thriving. I didn't have any huge goals. I just was kind of like making it through life. And I knew for me personally that I needed some big goals that were on a calendar that I needed to accomplish. And so at the beginning of 2022, I was just kind of like working out here and there. I was jogging, just really doing it more so for just like a physical aspect like hey i kind of want to feel better and exercise but i had no clear goals in mind i wasn't tracking like what i was lifting i was you know eating decently healthy but i really didn't have any goals i would go out and jog and do the elliptical at the gym in march of 2022 towards the end of march actually I signed up for the Derby Half Marathon. I had not been training for this at all. I was just kind of like jogging here and there, but I said, you know what? I think this is gonna be a mental challenge, and if I can do this, like I can show myself that I can basically do anything I put my mind to, so I signed up. And when I got out there, I met this lady, and she was a survivor of cancer, and she told me a little bit about her story on how she was going to run a half marathon and a marathon in every state in 2022. And it just really inspired me uh, meeting her. And so I ran that race. Um, the beginning of it, I ran way too fast and then, you know, just struggled it out for the rest of the race. And I ended up finishing that in one hour and 51 minutes, which was my goal was to at least come in under two hours so i was able to meet that and so i was like super happy with like my performance but i will tell you that after i ran that i freaking felt every muscle in my legs and lower back um my feet hurt like all kinds of stuff and so it was uh it was definitely a struggle and i was not trained for it so after that i really started researching like you know different endurance training techniques and I knew that I needed the ability to exercise more when I had my kids. So I went and bought a used Peloton bike from somebody. And, you know, I really started doing that, doing those workouts, and I really enjoyed it. And so it got me thinking, like, this cycling stuff is kind of fun. It's something different. It's low impact, which really helps me because I have a history of foot injuries, which is um, something that I really struggle with. So after getting the Peloton, I was like, you know what? I remember as a kid watching the Ironman races on TV 
and thinking to myself, these people are insane because even whenever I ran cross country in high school, I was thinking, you know, that's a, that's a 5k, 3.1 miles. I'm like, how in the heck do these people do all this stuff? And I looked online and I found, you know, the different Ironman length races. So you have the full Ironman and then you have the Ironman 70.3. And I thought to myself, you know what? If I can find an Ironman 70.3 in the fall, I'll sign up for it and I'll do it. Keep in mind, at this time, I had not swam at all. I didn't even own a road bike. And so I just kind of winged it, man. I signed up for the Memphis one. Um, I knew somebody who lived down in the area. And so that's one of the main reasons I wanted to go to that race. Um, so I signed up for it. So I got to work. I was doing a lot of research on YouTube about training plans and different stuff. And, you know, one of the key things that I struggled with my training plan was a lot of these training plans are made for people that aren't necessarily single parents um, that don't have family around. So, you know, weekly workout loads and all that stuff. And, you know, I have 50-50 custody of my kids. So um, every other week I have my kids. So I can't just leave my kids in the house and go for a five mile run in the morning. Um, you know, I also work a full-time job. And so, I really had to make my schedule work for me. So on the weeks that I have my kids, I do have the ability to work out at home. So I had the Peloton bike that I was able to work out on more whenever I had my kids. And I would try to mix in some running workouts when I could. But I kind of had to make the schedule work for me. And, um, you know, it was a really difficult journey um, balancing all of it. There was a point where I I literally, the first time I went for a swim and I could barely make it down the length of the Olympic sized pool without getting out of breath, I really was unsure if I was going to be able to do it. Um, but I leaned into it and honestly, probably one of the most transformative parts of all this was really learning how to swim um, and do freestyle. And like I said, I'm even by the time of the race, I'm no pro, I, I'm not fast but I was able to make it through it and do, you know, what I felt was decent. I feel like we often want to do things that are within our comfort zone. We don't want to face failure. We don't like failure is scary because like, how is that going to make you feel like when you do something that you're really not sure that you can do facing that failure is probably one of the hardest things because we live in a society where we always want to have a safety net. We don't want to fail. We don't want to look bad. We don't, you know, want to look bad in front of our family, our friends, on social media, whatever it may be. So a lot of times we do things with a safety net of knowing that we can really do them. So if you, you know, want to sign up to run something, you know, a lot of people will just, I'll go, I'll sign up to run a 5k. I can do that. Like, you know, and it's really about, to me, about making those really big goals that you aren't sure that you can achieve. That is where the most transformation happens because you honestly don't know if you can do it. And I will tell you, there were multiple times in this journey where I really doubted my ability to accomplish this goal. Um, between the swimming, the cycling, the running, just being out of balance, the workload of all of the training. You know, it was really difficult. Even though like my performance in the race wasn't really what I wanted it to be, I wouldn't change a thing about my journey because I learned so much about myself and I've come to like honestly this new place where I have a newfound almost respect for myself and I know that if I can put my mind to something like I can do anything. So this whole journey to completing the Ironman 70.3 from like a personal standpoint, I wouldn't change anything about it because honestly, like my training wasn't perfect and I'll get to that in a second, but ultimately like completing this race was a huge mental challenge for me and it's probably one of the most difficult things that I've ever done. But I will say that I would change a few things about my training. So let's get to that. So 
So number one is when you look at your training schedules, like there's a ton of different schedules online. I'll link some that I referenced whenever I was building my workout plan is doing brick workouts. And whenever I say brick workout, that means going for a bike ride and then running off of the bike. Because what you'll find is whenever you come off the bike, your legs like where you've been in a different type of repetitive motion, like your legs, I don't know, feel like jelly or something. Like it's kind of hard to explain. And for me, honestly, like I found it really easy to run really hard after I got off the bike. Um, but one mistake that I feel like I made is when I did my brick workouts, a lot of the brick workouts that I did, I would cycle for a really long time, you know, like let's say two, two and a half, three hours. And then I would go for like a two mile jog, a three mile jog. What I would change is I would have done more, you know, let's say, two hours on the bike and then go for like an hour run instead of doing shorter runs off the bike. And the reason why I say that is, is that I feel like the real big mental challenge of this for me was after about the first mile or two of the run, I just felt exhausted. I don't know. I mean, and granted, like you've been going for this whole time, but I felt like mentally it would have been better for me to have some longer runs off the bike. Um, I feel like that would have been one training thing that I would have changed. Number two, whenever it came to swimming, I really wish that in the beginning I would have focused more on technique instead of just doing these really long workouts because I was so concerned with the distance of the race that I really didn't focus on technique until afterwards. And what I found is like, as I got into the swimming training and I started watching videos, like I really enjoyed watching effortless swimming was probably the channel that I learned the most from is that I would have really started out more with those drills and learning really good form instead of just trying to fight the water. Because when you don't swim with efficiency, you really are just fighting the water. And it was really difficult for me to find that swimming form. I come from like a running background and I'm just like horrible when it comes to swimming. So that first month, month and a half, I probably should have just focused on swim technique and form in the pool. And then I could have augmented that with maybe like a 30 minute zone two jog afterwards. And if you're wondering what I mean by zone two, I'll get to that next in my next comment. The third thing that I would change about my training is really focusing on zone two. And so whenever you talk about zone two, um, if you do any kind of endurance research, it's all based off of heart rate zones. And so I'll throw up a chart here, uh, the different you know, percentages on heart rate zones, but um, I got this Garmin Phoenix watch and I've absolutely loved this thing. And then I got a chest strap heart rate monitor, which I would consider absolutely vital um, to being able to train for something like this. And so I will link some of those. I'll link that down below, just some examples because the wrist, it's funny because now, if I run with just this and I look at my heart rate on this versus what I know intrinsically how I feel of my heart rate whenever I have the heart rate strap on, there's a considerable distance or difference. There's a considerable difference on what the heart rate is. It's just a much more accurate with a chest strap heart rate monitor. When using that chest strap heart rate monitor, you can really track your heart rate zones and that zone two heart rate zone. I should have focused on more. One common mistake that a lot of people do when they go to run is they feel the whole no pain, no gain mindset. And so if you're not running and you're like seriously out of breath that you're just wasting your time. This is especially true for people like me who don't have a ton of time and you feel like you're time constrained for exercising. So you feel like you gotta get the most out of every little second that you have. 
And what I've learned is I feel like not only did I only have like, you know, the four months or whatever to really train, but also I just felt like I was like super rushed whenever I would do my training. So I should have done a lot more zone two stuff. And what you'll hear a lot in endurance training is the 80 20 rule. So 80% zone two. And then the other 20% would be like more like threshold work. And when I say threshold work, that's like your race pace type stuff to where your heart rate's going to be higher. And so I should have done way more zone two and really focused on that. Finally, the fourth thing that I would change is when it comes to my diet. Um, I really had no clue on how to really construct my diet with the major increase amount of workload that I was doing. Um, there was one point where I could tell I was eating too little and I was always tired. And then there was a point where I felt like I was eating too much. And, you know, I, I usually eat pretty low carb. And so I just had to make a different, a bunch of different adjustments to my diet. And I would have just listened to my body more. I really did start towards the end, allowing myself to eat more calories and really trying to look at the caloric load that I was placing on myself with my workouts and trying to balance that with what I was eating because I still was trying to lose some weight, but I feel like there was a point where I was really kind of overtraining versus what I was eating and it really kind of threw off my metabolism. And now that um, I'm several weeks after that, I've been struggling with an injury, um, which resulted from the race, but I've actually noticed like I feel way better. I've got a lot more energy. Like I have been eating really balanced for the activity that I've been doing. I've actually been losing a little bit more body fat and I feel much better. And I think that as you know, I heal from this injury and I start, I think what I'm going to do is really start tapering up into my workouts and adjusting my caloric intake based on that as I, you know, ramp up my training again. Um, but whenever I started in, whenever I signed up for in May for the race, like I immediately just started freaking getting after it. And like I went and I really didn't ramp up my training. I just like went boop and started like doing all kinds of crazy training and I really didn't know how to adjust my food intake. So just really like if you're going to do one of these, try to plan it ahead, start ramping up your food intake as you ramp up your training and don't just like go, you know, cojones to the wall trying to uh, really make some hu super huge adjustment to what you're eating and your, you know, the stress that you're putting on your body because I think I was putting my body under undue stress and that's what caused me not to really start stop losing some fat that I was trying to lose and not feel the best because I remember one time I got out on a like a 70 mile bike ride and I didn't take any you know nutrition or any like gels or anything with me and I just like ended up having to stop at a gas station get like a banana and a protein bar and a couple other things and some Gatorade and like refuel for like 10 minutes because I felt like crap. Ultimately guys, I am very thankful that I did this. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Um, I might make more videos about this if there's some questions about anything that goes along with this. I really enjoyed doing this and that's one of the main reasons that I haven't made a ton of fishing content this summer because I've been training for this race and um, as far as the fishing content goes I will definitely get back into it um, once I recover from this injury but as always guys um, don't forget get outside do something awesome take somebody with you if you get a chance and I will see you in the next video and check out these bloopers to finishing an Ironman 70.3 my freaking cat. Oh my gosh. Kitty, go on. <laughs> this cat, man. What are you doing? You are messing everything up. <laughs> ah! Cat, man.
Try to make video here. Ah.